In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Yardo Lead, the Viceroy Grand Victorian Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. Here we have the Yard of Lead, the Viceroy Grand Victorian Fountain Pen. Very long name for this pen. So let's just do a, a walkthrough. The whole pen is solid sterling silver, or the, the body and the caps are solid sterling silver. There's nothing on the finial or the end of the barrel. They're just smooth. But we start, we have a, a ring here, a ring here, and then we get into the area that is, I'm calling it stamped, but it, it is a type of engraving. They basically have a tool that makes these marks in the pen and they whack it with a hammer. So I, I can't remember the exact figure. It was either 3,000 or 1,300 strikes that an individual artisan is doing to make these engravings. And if you see, let's see, can this focus up here? You know, you can see spots where like this one dips down a little bit into this sort of clean area. It just kind of shows up it really is done by hand. There isn't a machine that is making these marks. And I think that is kind of a, a very special thing that Yard of Lead does and definitely part of the appeal of this pen. So we have these two rings here and then we go into the clip, which is a very old style clip. In a way it is kind of crude looking, like it isn't super well finished on the side. I'm not really sure what this piece is at the, the bottom of the, the clip, but I checked pictures of other ones and they all seem to have it, so I guess it's normal. But definitely kind of a, a cruder looking thing. You've got these two, I don't know if they're nails, they're not welds, I don't think they're welds, but that's how it's connected to the, the barrel as far as I, I know. And then here's the, the serial number for this particular pen. You can see Yardo Lead. And then here on the side we have these hallmarks, uh, 925, 925, this is a yard of lead hallmark, 925, 925, again, repeated these two down here. And then uh, we have an anchor, which I believe represents Birmingham, where this pen is made. Please let me know if that's wrong. And then we have a lion, which is sort of the mark for English sterling silver. And then we have a V. I don't know what that is. That's maybe a, a date code or something. If someone knows what that V hallmark means, let me know. And then here we have a spot on the cap for an engraving. You could put your initials there or, or something. It's a long pen and it's a big pen. They call this the Grand because it's a big one. It's styled like a old propelling pencil. And you know, the name Yard of Lead, that is what they made were propelling pencils always out of sterling silver. It's a really, really cool looking pen. And you know, I didn't know that they made this pen for quite a while. Typically these old style pens were thin and because they are solid sterling silver they're heavy so I never really found them to be comfortable. Karen Dosh, Swiss company, also makes a similar style pen though not out of sterling silver where they're very thin and because they're metal they're heavy and kind of uncomfortable. But when I saw that they made a big one with a big sized grip section I decided to go for one. So here we have a, a smooth grip section and you can see it says 925 sterling on this sort of little ring here. It's a friction fit cap. It kind of snaps into place. It's a very strong click. I don't know, you know, as I use it, it will probably lighten up, but it, and I, I think it actually has become easier as I use it. But when you first get this pen, or at least when I first got it, it was quite hard to get the, the cap off but it's, I think, breaking in. Hopefully it won't get to the point where the cap just falls off, but it's a good, quite a good force to take it off even now. So let me put this down. Here we have a number six Yovo nib, and it has 
not a ton of decoration. It says yard of lead, and then it says 18 carats, 750, and F to denote that it is a fine. This pen only comes in fine, medium, and broad. There are no other nib options. Plastic feed. Very good looking. They you know they match the color of the the nib matches the sterling silver body really nicely. I don't know if they put a special plating on there or if it's just a white gold or rhodium or something, but it looks pretty good. You can hear this kind of squeaking a little bit. There's an O-ring, which is what you're hearing there. And this pen takes standard cartridge converters. It comes with a international converter. It's completely unbranded. It's not really interesting. And sorry for the squeaks. Okay, let's do some measurements. It's quite a long pen. Uh, you can see this is roughly, I would say that's 146, 147 capped. 138, 139. Uh, I don't post this pen. I do not know if it will snap into place, but I'm not going to find out. It's too heavy and I don't need to potentially scratch the pen to do that, so I'm not going to. Let's do the grip section. Now this does obviously taper quite a bit, so I'll go for the kind of wider part of the top here, which is 12, that's 11.9, very wide, very bottom is 10, and then kind of in the middle we're looking 11.6. Very comfortable size grip section. This is uncapped with a cartridge, kind of half full, uh, about 45 grams, that's very heavy. And then with the cap is 64 grams. So that's a very heavy pen. I find that, actually to my surprise, I could write you know two, three pages uh, with this pen uncapped without getting any, before I started feeling any kind of fatigue. Uncapped, it's, it's actually, pr it feels pretty well balanced despite the weight. There's nothing heavy up at the end. It works pretty nicely. Let's do a writing sample. This is the yard o lead the viceroy grand Victorian. Wait, it's got a long name. Okay, this is a fine, and this is Kaweco Black. Fast writing. So you'll notice that it's skipping when I'm writing fast. Now, I've used this pen a lot, and I use it as part of a, a daily rotation, and I don't have any issues with it writing normally. So even though you're going to see it does skip, when you write really fast, it doesn't translate into a problem in everyday use. So it's not something that I would have addressed by a nibmeister where there are some pens where they have a hard time stopping or they'll skip in between. You know, when you end a line here and then you start over here, it'll skip. That drives me nuts. But this is just the feed, for whatever reason, is not quite keeping up when you go really, really fast. But normal writing, it's not an issue, and I love writing with this pen. Now, reverse writing, I can't spell reverse. It's actually really, well, maybe not that direction. It's relatively smooth, and I would say it's one of the smoother reverse writing, or pen, or nibs that can do reverse writing. You do get a little bit of, you can see it's starting to fade here, but I think it, it, it is 
a reasonable candidate for reverse writing, and it is noticeably thinner. Now, in terms of flexibility, this nib isn't really flexible. You can, you know, it's 18 karat gold, so you can get a little bit out of it, but I wouldn't, I really wouldn't push it. I don't push on this nib to try to get any line variation. It's just not really designed for that. Okay, so that's the writing sample. So what are my pros and cons for the Yardo Lead, the Viceroy Grand Victorian Fountain Pen? The biggest pro is the looks. They've taken this vintage sterling silver propelling pencil look and blown it up into this big fountain pen. It's awesome. It looks really cool in my opinion. I like that it's handmade. It's sort of hand stamped or engraved. It's really, really cool. I like the big number six, 18 karat gold Yovo nib, very nice writing nib. And it's actually quite a comfortable pen. I find that I can get three plus pages out of it before my hand gets tired. Now in terms of cons, the biggest con is definitely the price. Street price is around 990 in the US. And that is a very, very expensive pen, but it's, it's handmade, it's solid sterling silver, it's a pretty special pen, I think. Now the other con is the weight. I would not post this pen, I actually haven't even tried to. It would be just too top heavy, and the pen is already quite heavy, unposted. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below, and if you like this video, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, and until next time.